It begins. <laughs> Guys, I don't know how good the connection is going to be today. Uh, the reason why I say I don't know, it is raining bad here, real bad. Bad weather where I'm at. <sighs> so I don't know if it's going to affect the internet. So if the internet goes out, you blame the weather. It's really bad. I mean, it's raining in a place that's not known for rain. And boy, today was like a really hard day for me. Stressful, a little bloating. And it's my junk day today. And I kind of junked out too much. So pray for me by the grace of God for self-discipline, self-control. And the Lord Jesus helps me for his glory. Oh, really? That's good. That's what it is. Praise God then. Hallelujah. Let it flood if it's going to erase the coronavirus. Right? Come on now. When did they do that, Niles? I was just talking about that. When did they do that, Niles? The oh my God. Today? Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, man, bro. I was just saying it. Guys, let me tell you what's happening. How are you, brethren? Number one, we don't panic. Okay. Number one, we don't panic because Jesus is God over all creation. He's God over all virus, diseases, and flus. Number two, we need to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Do everything we need to do everything necessary to keep us healthy and keep our loved ones healthy and the elderly out of harm's way, right? So that's number two. If you truly believe in Jesus, you truly believe he's alive, he's almighty, he's in control even with an outbreak of coronavirus. And if you get it, that means the Lord permitted it for a reason. Trust in the wisdom of Jesus Christ. Trust in the love of Jesus Christ, the compassion, mercy of Jesus Christ, the power of Jesus Christ, that if you do get it, there's a reason. You may not know the reason. He knows the reason. And he's going to use all of that for his glory, for his praise, and to bring about the salvation of his people. In Jesus' almighty name. Yahweh Father says, correct? Thirdly, I do want to say this, though. What's happening now, so remember that. Don't panic. Don't be afraid. Jesus is in control. Jesus is in control. Okay, that's number one. Number two, be wise as serpents, innocent as doves, and do everything you need to do to keep yourself healthy, your loved ones healthy, and keep the elderly and those who have health conditions out of harm's way. That doesn't mean you become lazy, complacent, and idle. No, that's not. Knowing Jesus is in control doesn't mean you tempt the Lord Jesus. What it means is you do everything God expects you to do, required of you, even by your <clears throat> health provider. But at the end of the day, trust in Jesus Christ Almighty that he has you in his hands. Whatever happens, he will preserve you and guide you. And there's a reason for why these things happen. I may one day do. I may. Don't ask me to do it right now. I may one day do a series on why there's so much evil in the world and not just moral evil, but natural evil. Why are there disease, diseases, tsunamis, earthquakes, tornadoes, right? And I will tell you that God willing, when I do discuss that, I've done that. In my local Bible studies in Illinois, when I used to teach Bible studies, I did series on why is there so much pain, suffering, misery, and natural evil, natural disasters. I will tell you, though, you may not like the answers. You may not like what I have to say because I'm going to try to give you answers to the best of my ability from the Holy Bible, God's Word, the inspired, inerrant truth of God. And so God has the answers, but you may not like the answers that God has. Jesus Almighty name, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless the connection, strengthen it for your glory, Father. For your glory, Lord Jesus, for you, for your glory, Holy Spirit, loosen my tongue. So I told you it's going to buffer because of the weather. So if it gets bad, we'll stop. But let's trust the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ that the connection will stay strong. Yeah. 
David Wood is a beast when it comes to God and evil. I mean, how can an all good, all powerful, all wise God and evil coexist? And he's not the first one to answer it. And I'm not the most brilliant guy to answer that. You have had philosophers from various theistic traditions answering that question, right? Because that is probably the chief objection against the existence of God by atheists and agnostics. In fact, that's the reason why, that's the reason why Bart Ehrman lost his faith in God. People don't know this. Bart Ehrman did not lose his faith in Christianity because of the variant readings of the Bible. He just lost his faith that and the Bible being inspired. Bart Ehrman lost his faith in the existence of God because of all the evil and suffering, especially natural evil, what we call natural disasters, right? That's why he lost his faith. But this question has been a point of debate between theists, agnostics, and atheists for centuries. So it's not like Christians haven't answered it. But at the end of the day, no answer will suffice a heart that refuses to accept. And no objection will be good enough to cause someone who loves Jesus to doubt him. Let me repeat it again. No answer will ever be good enough for someone who's already made up his mind or her mind. God doesn't exist. And no objection will be good enough to cause someone who loves Jesus to walk away from Jesus. Did you guys get that? Did you hear what I just said? Let me repeat it a third time. Can I repeat it one more time? Okay. No answer, scientific fact, historical, archaeological proof, you name it, whatever field, will ever be good enough and sufficient enough to convince someone that God exists if he or she refuses to believe in God at all costs. And no objection against the truth of the Bible and against the Lordship of Jesus Christ will ever dislodge someone who is madly and passionately in love with Jesus Christ. You get my point? The reason why I'm saying that is because at the end of the day, it really isn't the evidence. Because I know Jesus is, is God. I know Jesus is real. I know Jesus is alive. I know the Bible is true. I know that. Because Holy Spirit has testified with my spirit, Jesus is Lord and the Bible is his word, right? <clears throat> the only way someone can ever trust in Jesus and cling to Jesus and believe in Jesus is if the Holy Spirit does the miraculous work of regeneration. Taking a heart that's dead, a heart that refuses to accept God as he is, a mind that refuses to submit to the thoughts of God, because if it doesn't make sense to him or her, it can't be true. Making him or her the standard of what can and cannot be true, and therefore sitting in the judgment seat over God. Unless the Holy Spirit changes that mind, no amount of evidence will convince anyone. No amount of evidence will convince anyone, right? So that's my point. And in fact, most of you love Jesus, trust in Jesus, cling to Jesus, not because of any, any evidence. It's because you heard the gospel, you believed in the gospel, and now you trust in the God of the gospel. And evidence for you is something that came later on in your walk only to confirm and solidify what you already believe to be true. Right? What you already believe to be true. See, I didn't come... To believe in Jesus Christ, to trust in Jesus Christ, and love Jesus Christ because of the evidence. I didn't. I read the Bible. I read the New Testament. I fell in love with Jesus all over again. I fell in love with the Son of God all over again. But then when the objections came and the attacks came, that's when the Holy Spirit then refuted the objections and showed me the massive amount of evidence shouting, the Bible is the historically accurate, inspired, preserved Word of God. Trust what it says about the historical Jesus. He is risen. But I already believed in Jesus. So the evidence only solidified what I already believed to be true. You with me there? So I don't want people to be deceived and thinking that 
I can, or David Wood can, or Lee Strobel can, turn atheists into believers because of evidence. That's why when Lee Strobel says, the evidence convinced me that Christianity is true. No, it didn't. That's not a true statement. That's what he thinks. I'm not saying he's lying. Understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's lying. He's mistaken because there are atheists who have heard the same evidence and try to find reasons to explain away the evidence or show why the evidence is weak and not convincing. So now, Lee, how do you explain that? Do you get what I'm saying? How do you explain that you have atheists who've heard your case, heard your arguments, and either explain it away, right, or are not convinced by it, or try to find holes in your argumentation in order to confirm their atheism? You with me there? How do you explain that? So when someone tells you the evidence led me to be a Christian, no, it didn't. The Holy Spirit convicted your heart, opened your mind from the evidence you heard to then trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It has to be the work of the Holy Spirit. It has to be the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So don't, don't, I'm not saying evidence is not used by the Holy Spirit. Evidence doesn't have a role to play and the sovereign work of the Holy Spirit to bringing people to faith. What I'm saying is, it's not evidence alone. It's not even the gospel alone. Because you can preach the gospel to 10,000 people, and out of those 10,000, only a handful believe, because it has to be the Holy Spirit of the living God taking your, your presentation, your proclamation, the evidence, and then convicting a heart that's dead, filling it with love, and opening a mind to see the evidence, and to hear the gospel, and then cling to Jesus. It has to be the Holy Spirit. No, that's not Calvinism. That's Biblicism. Just because Calvinists believe that, that doesn't mean it's not biblical. If you reject it because it sounds like Calvinism, then you're the fool for rejecting what the Bible teaches just because Calvinisms believe this aspect of the Bible when, when they're right. Okay. You, you notice how that's uh, that sounds like see for non Calvinists to say it sounds like Calvinism that's a red flag. Oh, that sounds like Calvinism can't be true. Why you're saying that nothing in Calvinism is true, nothing in Calvinism is biblical, nothing in Calvinism is anchored in the sound interpretation of the Bible. It's all false. I know you're not that stupid to say that, right? Right? Okay. So don't tell me it sounds like Calvinism. Ask me, is it biblical? It's Biblicism. I know you're joking with me, right, A.D.? All or nothing? Let me give you a verse to prove it so we can pray and ask the Lord to then fill us with the Spirit because it was a rough day today. Rough day because I feel a little under the weather. It's raining bad. feel a little bloated. No, and by the way, it's not coronavirus. I don't have the symptoms. And God forbid, I'll have the symptoms. God forbid, may the Lord Jesus... Cover us by his precious blood, seal us by the Spirit. And if we do get it, may the Holy Spirit give us the grace to overcome it and not succumb to it. Unless that's God's way to usher us in <clears throat> heaven to be <clears throat> before the feet of Jesus Christ. His will be done. He is God. He's God over all diseases and the coronavirus. The coronavirus flees <clears throat> before the feet of Jesus and flees from the blood of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world for the salvation of those who turn to Christ and love him. Now, let me give you a verse. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. You're going to ask me a good question, Armando Santos. And see, although it's a live Q&A, realize, realize this. Realize this. Any question I answer, I'm going to have people who disagree with me, detractors. Okay. So even before I answer questions, I'm going to give some rules again to help make this session very fruitful, beneficial, so that we don't cause one another to stumble and sin in our hearts and bring shame to Jesus Christ. But before I do that, Protestant, are you here, brother? No, Jesus Christ is the Lord. I'm going to correct that in a minute. All right. Is Protestant here or did he leave me? Protestant, where are you, bro? I guess my 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 Bible poster guy is gone. Did he leave? Hmm. I guess he's not here. 
All right, I guess he's gone. All right. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Hold on. I don't know, maybe I lost connection because remember, it's raining real bad here. Protestant believer, you gone, bro? What about first and last? Hold on. Hey, can you guys hear me in uh, chat? Hey, Discord. I'm now live on Discord as I'm on my live session. Did Protestant get raptured? Sam, we oh. found it. I'm on live session. They can hear you, NT. Oh, sorry. Because I'm I'm waiting for Protestant believer. I think he got raptured. I'm waiting for Protestant hey. believer. I think he got raptured. Yeah, Sorry, I was on the phone. I was on the phone. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Turn off your mic. All right. Okay, guys. If you can't make it, that's okay. I just thought maybe you got raptured, and that would be even scary. Not only did Protestant get raptured <laughs> and we got left behind, but we got the coronavirus to boot. That means we're all under the judgment of God. If this guy got raptured and we were left behind, man, you know we have an issues right now. All right. That scared me for a minute. That was me going live on Discord. Man, Protestant, you freaked me out for a minute, bro. Because I thought you got raptured and we, we were all left behind, meaning that we all had been deceived thinking we were truly saved. But now we have to question our salvation. And on top of that, not only are we no longer saved, even though we thought we were, now we got to face the coronavirus on top, on top of this all. Don't ever do that, do that to us again. Don't ever scare us like that again, giving us the impression that we're not saved and we were left behind to face the coronavirus all by ourselves. I don't want to be. All right, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3, and then I'm going to begin in prayer because we need the Holy Spirit to show up because this is going to be an intense session of Q&A. And as you can see, I subtitled it, Stump, Stump. The Assyrian Encyclopedia. And I don't know everything. But let's read 1 Corinthians 12.3. Guys, read 1 Corinthians 12.3 with me. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Let me repeat that last part. No person can truly confess Jesus as Lord in a saving way, a confession that's true, a confession that's from the heart, a confession that leads you to trust in Jesus and cling to Jesus as your Lord, unless the Holy Spirit does that work in you and through you. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. So no, it's not Calvinism. It's Biblicism. 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 Lord Jesus, loosen my tongue. So there are things I'm going to say that may sound Calvinistic. There are things that I'm going to say that may sound like I'm espousing Armenian theology. There are things I'm going to say that may sound like I'm Roman Catholic or Orthodox. I am none of none of the, of, of the above. I am none of the above. Not because I think I'm better than Calvinists. I'm not. Not because I think I'm better than Armenians. I am not. And I'm not saying this to be humble. I'm being honest. What I am seeking to do, what I am seeking to do, to the best of my ability, though I do it imperfectly, and this is where I trust the Holy Spirit to help me do this for the glory of Christ, I want to be as honest to Scripture as possible. And if the Bible teaches something that sounds like it's Roman Catholic, so be it. If it sounds like it's Calvinistic, so be it. If it sounds like it's Armenian, so be it. As long as it's biblical and I'm understanding the passage correctly and not misunderstanding it, I want to submit to the Bible because the Bible is the voice of my Lord, my master, my creator. And I want to be enslaved to his voice, <clears throat> empowered by his voice, transformed by his voice, and not by traditions. Honestly, and I'm not saying tradition is bad. See, don't get me wrong. Not all traditions are bad. There are good traditions. There are traditions in the Bible, traditions that people have passed on that are faithful to Scripture. But that's how I know it's a good tradition. A tradition that has fidelity with the scriptures, faithful to the scriptures, that's a good tradition. A tradition that contradicts scripture, you know that's bad. You get my point? I don't know when you say he's a Calvinist. Who are you talking about? Who's a Calvinist? Jeremiah 15, 16, who's a Calvinist? Are you a Calvinist and you're imposing Calvinism on me? Is that what you're saying? Okay. 
whistling at night. That's interesting you said that because my dear brother James White said that about me one time when I got him angry and we're not at you know speaking terms. He had told me, yeah, it's like someone whistling at night. Where'd you get that saying? Did you watch it? Did you listen to his DL line when I wasn't in his favorite list? And by the way, you know who, who gave me the name, the moniker, the Syrian Encyclopedia? James White, my brother from a different mother, like no other. All right. Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. And Father, today, I especially need you. In fact, we need you every day, every second, every minute. Because we move in you, we breathe in you, and have our being in you. And apart from you, we could not exist. Even the breath we breathe, the, the biological life that we're enjoying right now is a gift of your grace, the grace of Jesus, the grace of the Holy Spirit. Father, today it was a hard day for many of us, especially with this, this epidemic of the coronavirus where people are now deathly afraid. Instead of fearing you and your judgment, they fear this virus. Father, we ask in the almighty name of Jesus, your beloved son, cover us by the blood of the lamb. Wash us and purify us and cleanse, cleanse us. Cleanse our inner being and our outer being with the blood of Jesus. And cleanse our mouths and our hearts, the desires of our hearts and the words of our mouths and our minds and our thoughts and our souls and our bodies and the precious pure blood of the Lord Jesus. Father, please cleanse us. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Sanctify us by your Holy Spirit. And transform us by your Spirit to become more like Jesus in the way we live, the way we love you, the way we worship you, to live for you and worship you and love you and even die for you if necessary and destroy all our fears, our doubts, our disbelief, Father. Save us from our own wretchedness, our flesh, our sinful passions. Mortify those passions in us and fill us with the life of the Spirit. Power from the Spirit, fruit from the Holy Spirit. And Father, help me this session. Give me the health I need. Fill my lungs and my chest and my throat with the breath of life, Father. And save me. Save me from my own <clears throat> fleshly desires. Purify the motives of my heart to do it for the glory of Jesus, not for the praise of men. And save me from being unnecessarily offensive to my brethren, Father. And bless them, Lord. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear. As you protect me from error and empower me to speak the truth, convince them of the truth that I speak if it's from your spirit. If I make a mistake, save them and me from those errors, Father. To know your word truly, to live out your word perfectly, to love your word passionately because your word, the Bible, is truth and it reveals the true God, you, your son and your Holy Spirit. Help us, Father. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Holy Spirit. Bless this session. Grant us eyes to see and ears to hear. Save us from attacks of the enemy. And in light of this epidemic, protect the elderly, elderly father. Ya, Babi, Baban, Abba, Avinu, Babat Maran Ishum Shikha, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have mercy on the elderly, that none of them will leave this world without knowing Jesus, and that you will comfort them. Have mercy upon those with medical conditions. Strengthen them, that in this hour they will seek the great healer, the great physician, by whose wounds we are made whole in your sight, the Lord Jesus, and seal them by your spirit. And help us not to panic, Father, because you are God. You are God over creation. You are God over Satan. You are God over evil. You are God over all diseases. And the holy blood of Jesus gives us victory. Not even death can scare us because Christ has conquered death. He is alive. He lives. He's risen. And may he arise in our hearts, Father. May you arise in our hearts, Lord Jesus. And Holy Spirit, fill us, please. Fill us, please, for the glory of Jesus. For the glory of Jesus. We need you every day desperately. And save us. And help me, Holy Spirit, to walk in self-discipline, self-control, and self-restraint. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. And help every one of us to know Jesus more. Anoint my mouth to speak without error, without stammering, without confusion. I never misinterpret the scriptures. Help me, please, for the glory of Jesus, to bless the church, to bless the people present, to bless them. May Jesus increase in us. We don't pray enough. We don't thank you enough. We don't love you enough. We don't praise you enough. We don't study the word enough. We don't live it out enough. Have mercy and pity us, O oh Father. Ya Abba, Ya Babi, Baban, Babit Manin Shibshicha. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, have pity and mercy on us, especially on our children. 
and the elderly, on my daughters, save them and seal them and wash them in the blood of the Lamb. We love you, Bobby. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Okay, we got Muslim Abdullah. No, no, why? Oh, my goodness. Can you leave Muslim Abdullah here so I can show that his prophet Muhammad is a son of Satan and that Jesus is Muhammad's God? You're quick. Okay, Muslim Abdullah, you sure you want to quote John 850? You sure you want to quote John 850? Are you ready? For me to show you how John 8.50 proves that Muhammad is the son of Satan and Jesus is Muhammad's God? Muslim Abdullah, are you seriously interested in knowing what the context says? No, not leather jacket. Hey, leather, can you do me a favor, brother? Don't help me. Let me deal with this young man. Can you not chime in and let me deal with this young man? I thought you guys knew the rules already. Help me to help you by not helping me and just focus. See, all of you want to jump on Muslim Abdullah. Leave him be. Let me deal with him instead of 20 people ganging up on him so he can use that as an excuse. Guys, please, you know the rules. Help me to be a blessing to you and not anger the Lord Jesus and cause you to stumble, please. But Muslim Abdullah is not responding. But now let me show you, Christians, how to turn John 8 against Muhammad, showing that Muhammad is an antichrist, the son of Satan. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because he quoted it. He's not interested in hearing the truth. But I want to help you because this is Q and A. We're going to take, we're going to talk about a variety of subjects. Okay. Let's look at the passage he cited, John eight verse fifty. Are you ready now? We'll take this as the first question. By the way, if you hear the background, that's the heater. Can I walk away for a, min a minute and turn it off? Do you guys mind? Because I can hear it in the background. That means you can hear it. The heat is on. It's on the street. The heat is on. It's on the street. Da -na 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 -na. Guys, pray in Jesus' name. I lose the rest of this fat. Burn it off. Keep it off and never gain weight. And ask the Lord Jesus to help me not look like David would, a white, obese dictator, not to look like him, even though today was my junk day. Boy, did I junk out. I don't want to look like David would, an ugly, overrated, fat, white dictator. The heat is on. The heat is up, up, it's on the street. Oh, 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 Shameless. By the way, Hater Woods' favorite song is Shameless. You got no shame. Shameless. Because Nadir Dingbat Ahmed called me Shameless Shamoon for wearing the same shirt for months at a time to the point that I not only did I wear it out, but it even changed colors on me. Shameless. The man who's got no shame, shameless. Okay, don't mind my coffee stained teeth. John 850, guys. Let me now teach you how to use every single passage that a Muslim quotes. I want to teach you, guys, pay attention. I want to teach you how to turn the very passage and the very context of the passage against the Muslim to show that Jesus is God and Muhammad is an antichrist. John 8.50, this is what he quoted. Okay, John 8.42, Muslim Abdullah. If you're not paying attention, I'm going to send you to Mecca. Pay attention, Muslim Abdullah. Pay attention. John 8.50, let's read it. Muslim Abdullah, if you're going to ignore me, I'm going to block you. Listen, because now all eyes are on you. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judges. Okay, so he says, see, I'm not seeking to glorify myself. You know why? Because this is what Muslim Abdullah did not quote. John 8, 53 and 54. John 8, 53 and 54. Guys, learn how to turn the Bible against Muhammad to prove Muhammad is a son of Satan and that Jesus is God. I will adjust John 8, John 8, 42. Don't run to the black stone, Muslim Abdullah. Stick around. John 8, 53, 54. 
all the way to 55. We're going to include 55 as well. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Who do you make yourself out to be? Pay attention, Muslim Abdullah. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, just like your prophet Muhammad did not know him. But I know him. And if I should say, I know him not. I shall be a liar like unto you, but I know him and keep his saying. So now Revelation 22, 13. Brother, of all people, you should know better, better, right? Muslim Abdullah, you're not paying attention. He says his father honors him. Is Allah the father of Jesus? So I'm going to embarrass you and your prophet now for misquoting the Bible. Is Allah the father of Jesus? Because he said... My father honors me. No, no. I'm not going to be a Unitarian. I'm going to be a Trinitarian who embarrasses your prophet as a son of Satan. You didn't answer my question. Don't be a coward. And the black stone's not going to help you, especially from the coronavirus. Do you believe Allah is the father of Jesus? Answer the question. You quoted John 8. Do you believe Allah is the father of Jesus? Yes or no? Guys, don't help me, please. Listen, guys, please don't help me. Just be patient. Do you believe Allah is the father of Jesus, Muslim Abdullah? You quoted John 8. I'm now going to turn it against you to embarrass you. Do you believe? You say it. Everyone's watching you. I'm making you famous. I'm giving you your 15 minutes of fame because now this is recorded. How Muslims cannot defend their prophet or their God. Do you believe? Do you believe? That Allah is the father of Jesus. Last chance, Muhammad, Muslim Abdullah. Quickly. So guys, send him a flower because he just helped us prove Muhammad is the son of Satan. Because the very gospel of John, Jesus says God is his father. The father of Jesus, but Muhammad said, Allah is a father to no one. So the very chapter he quotes condemns Muhammad as a son of Satan. Wonderful, Abdullah. Second thing, John 8, 12. John 8, 12. John 8, 12. Now notice I'm going to embarrass your prophet, Muslim Abdullah, because you made the stupid mistake of misquoting God's word against me when it's a sword to destroy false prophets like Muhammad. Glory to Jesus. Now, Muslim Abdullah, John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Revelation 22, 13, brother. Do you want me to block you? You did it again when I told you don't do it. Why are you now being disrespectful to me? Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. Post it again before Muslim Abdullah starts running to the black stone, because I'm going to address John 8.42. I'm not a coward like you. I'm going to address it. John 8.12. One more time. Do you believe, Muslim Abdullah, that Jesus is the light of the world? Nur. He's a nur. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I want you to tell everyone, I, Muslim Abdullah, believe Isa is a nur, the light of the world. I want you to say it. No. Show me in your Quran where your filthy prophet says, I am the light of the world, you liar. Because according to chapter 24, verse 35, the light of the heavens and earth is Allah. And in Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, Tawheed and Asma wa Safat. One of the names of Allah is An Nur, the light, and you cannot give Allah's names to any creatures. Ya Kafir, Ya Mushrik, Ya Ibn Muta. You lying Ibn Muta. Chapter 24, verse 35 of your Quran. Chapter 24, verse 35 of your Quran says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And one of the names of your Allah is An Nur, the light. And you cannot give that name to any creature. That's why your fake prophet never called himself the light in the Quran. So let's try this again. 
Do you believe Jesus is the light of the world when the Quran says in 24:35, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, and one of the 99 names of Allah is the light and nur? Do you believe that? You fool. Quoting 21, 107, where it says Muhammad is a mercy, is not showing me where Muhammad says he's the light of the heavens and the earth. Ya munafiq, ya kafir, ya mushriq, ya ibn muta. Okay, so I want you to tell everyone, I believe Jesus is the light of the world, one of the names of my God, Allah. So Jesus just claimed to be Allah because he claimed the name of Allah and Nur, a name given only to Allah and Islam. Muslim Abdullah, quote a verse in the Quran where any prophet is called the light of the world, the light of the heavens and the earth. See, I'm embarrassing your prophet. He's now crying because you're helping me embarrass him. Show me a verse in the Quran. Quote a verse in the Quran where anyone besides Allah is said to be the light of the world. Exactly. Don't comment and learn, guys. Don't comment. No. Mercy is not light. Are you that illiterate? You're embarrassing even your prophet. Your prophet wasn't as illiterate as you. Let's try this again. Where does your Quran call someone the light of the world besides Allah? We're waiting. This is now the third time you coward. Quote it. And I want you to admit to everyone here that one of the 99 names of Allah is An-Nur, the light. And according to Tawheed Al-Asma Wa Sifat, let me repeat it again. Tawheed Al-Asma Wa Sifat. The names of Allah cannot be given to a creature. So if the light, An-Nur, is Allah's name, no creature can claim to be An-Nur. That's according to your fake satanic theology. So now explain to us why Jesus said, I am the light of the world, if he's just a prophet, unlike your false prophet, son of Satan. Muslim Abdullah, if I have to repeat myself, you just embarrassed your prophet in front of all the Christians. Nowhere in your Quran is anyone besides Allah called the light, especially the light of the world, and in your theology, for the love of God, I just mentioned your theology. Are you that ignorant? You don't know your own theology? Tawheed, Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. Before I answer John 8, 42, because I'm embarrassing you and your prophet, there's nothing you can do about it. Do you agree that according to Tawheed al-Asma al -Asma wa Sifat, Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, one of the names of Allah is An-Nur, the light. Yes or no? Yes or no? John 8, 42 buries Muhammad, his mother and father in hell. I'm going to show you in a minute. Just be patient. I'm not like you. I don't run. Be patient. We'll get to John 8, 42. But I want you to tell everyone, yes, and nur the light, is one of the 99 names of Allah before I further embarrass you. Am I, got, am I on? Am I still on? Check. Check, check, check. Good. All right. Muslim Abdullah, one more chance before I really humiliate your prophet Muhammad. Ibn Muta, is it true according to Tawheed al-Asma wa Safat? One of the 99 names of Allah is An-Nur, the light. Yes or no? Yes or no? Oh, thank you. Secondly, according to Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, can a Muslim take the names of Allah, such as An-Nur, and ascribe it to a prophet? And can a true prophet say, I am An-Nur, the light of the heavens and the earth? Can a prophet say that, yes or no? If you lie, I'm going to embarrass you. Yes or no? What verse? I'm asking you according to your theology. Can a prophet say 
He is a nur, which is one of the names of Allah. And according to, to this is now the fifth time. I know being illiterate, you have to hear something more than once. Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat. The unique names and attributes of Allah cannot be given to a creature. One of the unique unique names of Allah is An Nur, the light. Is it not true that no true prophet can say, Ana An Nur? I am the light, especially the light of the heavens and the earth. Can a true prophet say that? Can a true prophet say that without committing shirk and violating tawheed? According to the Quran and Islam. Don't play games with us. Let's see how honest he's going to be. He's embarrassed of his prophet. That's why he won't speak truth. Taqiyya, guys. Yes, why not? Guys, I want, we're going to take a clip. We're going to post it on YouTube. Muslim Abdullah, fake name, committed shirk. Why not? Because according to Ahl al-Sunnah wa Jama'ah, according to your ulama, you just violated Tawheed al-Aswa wa Safat, ya Himyar, ya Ibn Muta. Can you show me anyone in the Quran claiming to be the light of the world besides Allah? Can you show me anyone in the Quran claiming to be the light of the world? Yes or no? Because we're going to send you to Mecca to smooch the black stone. Yes or no? Guys, did you see we just humiliated him? Listen, I'm not saying the Bible's 100% right. So those verses where Jesus claims to be God, they're not right. Get out of here, man. Send him out of here. That's all. Thank you for allowing me to embarrass your prophet to show he's a son of Satan. He just did, AD. He just answered. You hear what he said? I'm not saying the Bible's 100% right. That's when you know you humiliated a Muslim. No, block him. Send him out of here. You got it now? This is how you deal with Muhammadans. This is how you refute Islam. You understand now? I just showed you how to refute Muslims effectively. Obviously, I could care less about this blasphemer, which is why I'm harsh with him. But now, here's what I want you to learn from this. Here's what I want you to learn. Pay attention. Pay attention. When a Muslim quotes a verse from a particular book of the Bible, Make sure you've studied the Bible with great depth to know how to then use that very verse against him to show Muhammad according to the very verse or the chapter or the book that he's misquoting. According to that book, Muhammad is a son of Satan, Antichrist. You see how I did it? He quoted John 8.50. But then John 8.54 says, Jesus' own father honors him. And that same Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Things that according to the Quran and Islamic theology, no true prophet can say if Islam is true. Now, for the rest of you, for the rest of you, let me now show you where Jesus says, the Father himself glorifies the Son the way the Son glorifies the Father. John 13, 31 and 32. Okay. John 13, 31, 32. Okay. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall right away glorify him. Wow. Jesus doesn't need to glorify himself. Do you know why? God the Father glorifies Jesus. Did you catch it? Jesus doesn't need to glorify himself because Jesus says, my father does that for me. My father glorifies me the way I glorify him. And the way I glorify him, the father glorifies me. Who do you think you are, Jesus? That God himself glorifies you in the way you glorify him. What do you think? You're his equal? 
Okay, John 17, verse 2. John 17, verse 2. Watch here. Watch here now. Pay attention. <sighs> Sorry, John 17, 1 and 2. Sorry about that. I was thinking about the passage where he gives eternal life. John 17, 1. Let's read it again. Sorry, folks. In Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will call these passages. Watch here. Watch what Jesus says. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Wow. What courage. Father, glorify me so that I may glorify you. So my glorify, glorifying you, my glorification of you is conditioned on you glorifying me. You glorify me, I glorify you. Who do you think you are to talk like this, Jesus? No, 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 don't block him. If it's Muslim Abdullah, I want him. If it's him, I'm going to embarrass him further. Leave him, leave him. Okay, do you see that? So why does Jesus need to glorify himself when the Father does that for Jesus? The Father glorifies Jesus in the same way that Jesus glorifies the Father. But that's not all, folks. John 16, 14. No, but I think Killer Pie is Muslim Abdullah, right? And another Nick? John 16, 14. That's good. That's okay. We're going to use John 8, 42 against them. Wait. I hope it's him. John 16, 14. He, the Holy Spirit, shall glorify me. Wait, wait, guys. Pay attention. Jesus says, I don't seek my own glory because my Father seeks it for me. My Father glorifies me, and the Holy Spirit glorifies me. So why should I glorify myself? The Father does that for me, and the Holy Spirit does that for me. Does that sound like a creature? Does that sound like a creature? Can a creature say, hey, I don't seek my glory. God himself glorifies me, and so does the Holy Spirit. Does that sound like a creature? So that's number one. That's how you refute them. Now, killer pie. If you don't admit to me you're Muslim Abdullah, I'm going to block you again. Just let me know you're Muslim Abdullah. Are you Muslim Abdullah? Be honest or I'm going to block you. If you say no and I know it's you, you're him, I'm going to block you. Are you Muslim Abdullah? Because I'm going to answer John 8.42 now after you got embarrassed. Okay. Killer pie. Let's look at John 8.42 one more time because now I'm going to embarrass you further using John 8.42. And then you're going to stop quoting verses. If you keep quoting, I'll block you. Because all these verses prove Muhammad is the son of Satan. Thanks to you. You're going to see Muhammad in the day of judgment beneath the feet of Jesus. And Muhammad's going to say, thanks a lot, buddy. You helped the Christians expose me for I am a son of Satan. Thanks, bud. That's what Muhammad's going to tell you. Now listen. Okay. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Abdullah, do you believe Jesus came out of God, proceeded from God out of heaven and came into the world? Because that's what Jesus just said. Jesus just said, I proceeded and came from God, not the earth. I came from God. God in heaven, I came from him. Do you believe that? Yes or no? Do you believe what Jesus just said? Yes, Jesus was there with Allah above the seven heavens, above the throne, above the arsh, above the kursi, and that's where Jesus came from to enter the world. Do you believe that, yes or no? The one you just quoted, what do you mean? My goodness. John 8, 42 in front of your eyes, read it. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Here it is. Read it, killer pie. For I have come here from God. I'm not come on my own. You see how he tried to change the translation? You see the son of the devil? But even John 8, 42 in your version, I came here from God. Now, where did he come from God? Let's go to John 6, 38. Because earlier you quoted the one that said, proceeded forth and came from God. But now you change. That's okay. Let's see what he means, I came from God. I came from God. Let's see. John 6, 38. No, killer pie. Don't be stupid to read Islam into the verse. 
This is Jesus speaking. For I came down from heaven. Killer pie. You just got killed and your pie got smashed in your prophet's face. I came down from heaven. I came down from heaven. Not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So Jesus came from God out of heaven. Jesus came from God out of heaven. That's what he means. Do you believe that, killer pie? That Jesus came from God, proceeded from God out of heaven where God is. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I just did. Jesus is not God the Father. He's the Son of God the Father, the Word of God the Father. And He came from God the Father out of heaven to the world. Do you believe this? You didn't answer the question, coward. Don't just be brave with a sword and a gun to behead men and rape their women. Be brave here. Do you believe Jesus came out of God the Father out of heaven into the world? You're wasting my time. Do you believe this? Yes or no? So why are you quoting John 8, 42, where Jesus says he came from God and where from God? Out of heaven. You just admit the very verse you quoted proved Muhammad is a son of Satan. He's in hell because he denies the father of Jesus and Jesus is God's son. So why are you here now? Why are you here wasting our time? Why are you here wasting our time? No, it doesn't. It contradicts you and your fake prophet. Who told you it contradicts the triune God when that's saying Jesus came from God the Father? Did you read the verse again? If God were your father, you would love me. Christians, does the Trinity teach that Jesus is the Father? Christians, does the Trinity teach that Jesus is the Father? Notice his kappa. I'm not here to believe in the Bible as a whole. Killer pie, you were the ummi that quoted John 8. You quoted John 8. You're stuck with it. Anyway, because he's not the Father. Allahu Akbar. Jesus is not the Father. He is the Son of the Father, the Word of the Father. Kalimat Allah. So He's not the Father. That's why it's the Trinity. If He's the Father, then it's not the Trinity. Earth calling Muhammad. Jibreel speaking. Jibreel speaking, Muhammad. Just to let you know, I got it wrong in the Quran when I said Trinity is Allah. Mary and Jesus. Let me correct that, Muhammad. This is Jibreel, alayhi salam. It's really God the Father, Jesus the Son, Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. Okay, I'm sorry. I got it wrong in the Quran. But now here, it's now mansukh. We, we abrogate that. Because Allah is so great that I can show up 1,400 years later after you're dead and buried and you're warm food and you're burning in hell under the feet of Jesus and abrogate those parts of the Quran. Okay, now Killer Pie, you can stay here if you want, but don't ask questions. You sure, Killer Pie, you want to use John 20, 17? Oh, my goodness. Okay, guys, one more time. You sure? You want me to embarrass you a little more? Okay, John 20, 17, before I use this verse against you, before I use this verse against you, do you believe Jesus said that verse? I want everyone to hear this. Do you believe Jesus said that verse? John 20, 17. Because I'm going to use it against you to embarrass Muhammad again. Do you believe Jesus said that verse? Killer pie, do you believe Jesus said those words? So why are you quoting it? Why are you quoting this verse? You see? Killer pie. You can stay in the room, but don't ask any more questions. If you ask, I'm going to block you. Don't waste our time anymore. You've been cooked and served, like Christian Prince would say. Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. 
There is no progression of theology because it's that same chapter where Thomas worships Jesus as his Lord and God. Do you believe Thomas said that? Let's put it back to back. John 20, 17 and John 20, 28. Wait, wait, wait. Guys, please don't interact with him. Let me deal with him. Please. Too many people. Then the people who want to read our exchange won't get it. You want you sure? Do you want me to quote the earlier gospels against you, Killer Pie? P give me a gospel. Wait, wait. Who's blocking this guy? Medic, why are you blocking Killer Pie when he's the guy I'm Man, I'm going to have to start blocking the the mods here. Okay. Do you want give me the gospel you want me to use to prove Muhammad is a son of Satan? Give me any gospel. Name the gospel and I'm going to show you that according to that gospel Muhammad is a son of Satan. Go ahead. Give me the gospel. Let me have fun at your expense. He's out for 300 seconds. Okay. Why is it you Christians can't control yourself? You got to chime in. He's only one guy. You want 50 people to gang up on him? Let me deal with him to teach others how to... How to refute objections. Okay. Is he back? Sorry, guys. I hope you're okay with this. Yeah. Who we're waiting for him. Okay. If he's not around, oh, well. Okay, now let me explain to the rest of you what I'm doing here. Let me explain to the rest of you what I'm doing here. Before I answer their objection, I take the very passage and first show how it condemns Muhammad as a son of Satan. Then I go and I answer the objection. Let me show you how John 20, 17 shows Muhammad as a son of Satan, an antichrist. Okay, the one he quoted when I told him, do you believe Jesus said it? He said, no, because he got afraid. Let me tell you why he got afraid. John 20, verse 17. Watch here. Yeah, I know. You have the ultimate stumper because until you came down from heaven daily gripe, we didn't know how to stump Muslims. Thank you for your existence. Protestant, John 20, 17, or first, last, one of you guys. We're waiting before the rapture. Did he get raptured again? How many times does Protestant get raptured in a day? If not, I'm going to start posting. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Can anybody hear me? Hello? Protestant left again? Okay. First, last, are you here? Okay, first, last. John 2017, brother, I don't know what happened to Protestant. Second time he disappeared on me. If not, I'll, okay. You're sorry? How many times are you going to be sorry before you get fired, dude? Sorry ain't going to help us. It hasn't put bread on my table. Okay. Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Okay. Did you catch it? He's trying to show that Jesus has a God. How can he have a God if the Trinity is true? So I'm going to answer it for the benefit of the rest of you. But let me show you how you take a passage by a Muslim and turn it against him and show Muhammad is a son of Satan. Because that's what he is. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be unnecessarily offensive, but I'm going to speak the truth. If the Bible is true and Jesus is God's son, Muhammad is a son of Satan, an antichrist, because he said Jesus is not the son of God and Allah is not God. I mean, not the father. I'm sorry. He said Allah is not the father. Jesus is not the son. That makes him a son of Satan, an antichrist. Okay, now for the rest of you. What you do is you tell the Muslim, so did Jesus say these words according to you? They're going to have to say yes because they're quoting it. But hold on. God is the father of Jesus and the father of believers. The Quran says Allah is not the father of Jesus. He's not the father of believers. So if I believe this verse, I can't believe Muhammad because Muhammad contradicts Jesus saying, my God is my father and he's your God and father too. But hold on. 
Muhammad said, Allah is a father to no one. So if this is true, Muhammad is an antichrist, a liar, son of Satan. So thank you for quoting a verse that proves to me I should never, ever consider Muhammad as a prophet. Thank you. Did you catch it? See what I just did? So the very verse you quoted to try to convince me to be a Muslim proves I can't be a Muslim because Muhammad is an antichrist. You saw what I did there? Did you guys catch it? Now many of you already know this. For the newbies, you see what I just did when a Muslim quotes it? Or you're not getting it? Am I losing you guys? You guys got how you turn the passage around. What many Christians do, they go in panic. Well, you know, Jesus is the man. And, and the Muslim's laughing. No, you don't answer like that. You say, thank you for proving Muhammad is the son of Satan. What do you mean? That verse, Jesus says, he is my God and my father. And he is the God and the father believers. Is Allah your father? Can you say, oh, Allah, you're my father? They'll say no. Is Allah the father of Muhammad? Can you say Muhammad, son of Allah? No. Is Jesus the son of Allah? No. Is Allah the father of Jesus' disciples? No. So then why did you go to verse where Jesus says, my God is my father, and he's the God and father of the disciples, when this verse shows Muhammad is a liar, the Quran is a lie, and your God is not the God that Jesus was talking about? So what I did? You see how I turn it against them? But then when they tell you, well, no, we don't believe that part. Then why did you quote it? When you quote a verse, you're stuck with it. You can't get around it. You see what I just did? That's how you shut down Muhammad in the eyes of people showing Muhammad is an antichrist, a son of Satan. You can't believe in him. Walk away from him. Now, if you want me to answer the question for the newbies, those who've been with me for years already know this. Okay? Know how to answer the fact that Jesus, he is God, and yet God the Father is also his God. How can Jesus be God and the Father be his God? For the newbies here, do you want me to answer that for you? And then we can go on to other questions. I hope throughout this heat, you guys still learn. I hope in spite of the heat and the passion, and in spite of distractions, you learned, and you learned a lot. Okay? Now, are you ready? How could Jesus say, the Father is his God? Okay, let me now help you understand. I don't know if Anna's here, if Luisa's here, if Mary and Marcy, they're all here. This is something you need to learn. I have sessions on this on my YouTube channel, sessions on this and articles. But I'm going to give you an answer that's hopefully quick, but not too quick where I confuse you. Okay. Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32, 27. Watch here. Behold, I am the Lord, Jehovah, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So notice, number one. Jehovah is the God of all flesh. If you're human, you're flesh. Jehovah is your God. If you're animal, you're flesh. Jehovah is your God. If you are flesh, Jehovah is your God. Okay? It's number one. Let's go to John 1, verse 1. Pay attention now. I'm going to make it simple, but I'm not going to go too quickly. I want you to get it. I've done sessions on this, in-depth, lengthy sessions, and articles. Okay. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. You can go back. I did a session on John 1 about a month ago. Go listen to it. So notice, the person of the Word, the person of the Word existed with someone called God. That's God the Father. So that's two. The Word and God, and the Word was also God in nature. So the Word existed in fellowship with God, which would be the Father, because He's the Word of the Father, and He existed as God in nature. But now John 1.14. John 1.14. No, the guy's a joke. Killer Pie is a joke. He's a waste of time now. He's not listening. John 1.14. 
And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, every one of you, instead of letting this Mohammedan troll distract you, pay attention because this is your theology now. Jehovah is the God of all flesh. Number two, the word exists with God the Father, and he exists as God in nature, but then he became flesh in a point of time. The word who is not the Father became flesh. That word is the only begotten of the Father, the Son of the Father. So the word, who is the Son, he became flesh, he became human. The Father did not become flesh. His word, his Son, became flesh. So let me ask you a question, if you're paying attention. If Jesus is the word of the Father, so he's not the Father, who existed with the Father in eternity before creation, who also possessed the nature of God, if that word, Jesus, God's Son, becomes flesh, and the Father didn't become flesh. Would we, should we be surprised that once the Word becomes flesh, the Father then would become His God? If Jehovah is the God of all flesh, Father is Jehovah, He's the God of all flesh. Jesus is Jehovah, the Son is Jehovah, He's the God of all flesh. The Holy Spirit is Jehovah, He's the God of all flesh. But, this one, the word, the son, becomes flesh. The father doesn't become flesh. The spirit doesn't become flesh. So this word becomes flesh. Why would it come as a surprise or a shock that the father then would become his God as well? If the word becomes flesh, then the father would then become his God. Before he became flesh, he didn't have a God over him. He simply had a father over him. But his father becomes his God when the Word, the Son of God, becomes flesh. Is it clear now? Who didn't get what I just said? See? Jesus, the Son of God, the Word of God, who's not the Father, he became flesh. The Father didn't become flesh. Since the Father is Jehovah, Jehovah is the God of all flesh, His Word, His Son, who is also Jehovah, enters creation and He becomes flesh. So from the moment the Word becomes flesh, the Father becomes His God. Exactly, Christ is Almighty. Before He became flesh, he didn't have a God over him. Now, Daily Gripe keeps quoting Psalm 22.10, which is a psalm I've used in the other sessions to show Jesus had a God since his mother's womb. But it's not simply quoting Psalm 22.10, because then you're going to have to show how Psalm 22 is about Jesus and not about David. That's why I didn't bring up Psalm 22.10. But my friend, Daily Gripe, he's got the ultimate stumper. Because until he arrived on the scene, we didn't know how to stump Muslims. So thank you for leaving heaven as one of the archangels, because there's seven, to help us. We appreciate you, Delhi Gripe. For everyone else, did you get it? Did you get it? So why could Jesus say the Father's is God? How could Jesus say the Father's is God? Because Jesus became flesh. If he's flesh, if he's human then the Father is Jehovah, becomes his God as well. But before he became flesh, Jesus had no God over him. He simply had the Father over him. Clear? But now let me show you from that same chapter what they don't quote to you or try to explain away. Same chapter, right? John 20, 17, and John 20, 27 and 28. It's not simply humbling himself changed the world. Jesus humbled himself, even in the Old Testament, to appear on earth in human form without becoming a human being in order to be the angel of the Father. But even then, he didn't have a God over him. He humbled himself to become flesh, a human being, and take on a nature of a creature and become part of creation. Okay, John 20, 17 and 27, 28. Yes, happy-go-lucky. Notice what they don't like to quote from the same chapter, folks. Same chapter, read with me. Yes, Jesus Christ is the Lord. 
Same chapter, read with me. Same chapter that they don't like to quote all of it. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, my God and your God. Okay, so the father is the God of Christ, the God of the disciples. All right. But hold on, Mr. Muslim. Why didn't you quote John 20, 27 to 28? Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, not to the father, Ipen auto, said it to him, my Lord and my God. Wait, 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 Thomas. No, 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 no. Wait, Thomas. This Mohammedan who kisses the black stone like a pagan, like his pro prophet used to do, right? This Mohammedan told me to read verse 17, where Jesus says, the Father is Jesus' God and your God. But now you're saying, Thomas, Jesus himself is your Lord and he's your God. And then in John 20, 29, Jesus doesn't rebuke you. Thomas, don't you know this Mohammedan killer pie who just killed Muhammad and buried him further into Hades? Don't you know what he's going to say? You shouldn't say that, Thomas, because Jesus said the Father's is God and your God. How can you say Jesus is your God? So you must be wrong, Thomas, or that's one of those verses that didn't take place because Muhammad, the son of Satan, is always right. And the Bible, when it contradicts Muhammad, has to be wrong. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, I stumped you. Ready? Take shahada. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad ibn Shaitan. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad. Rasul al-Khmara. Rasul al-Himyar. Okay. You see how, how, you see, he can't answer this. All he can say, killer pie. Did you know, according to your prophet, the Quran has a God and a Lord that the Quran worships. You want me to embarrass you a little more? Killer Pie, your prophet said the Quran has a God and a Lord that it worships. So let me now embarrass you further, Killer Pie. I thank God you came here because I'm going to teach people how to embarrass Islam and expose Muhammad. Okay? Killer Pie, is the Quran kalam Allah? Now watch this coward not answer questions about his religion because now I'm going to turn it against him okay I'm going to now show you that this Muhammad has two gods he has two gods watch here but you're going to have to let me do it and don't intervene okay okay don't intervene hush don't text so I can deal with him okay killer pie is the Quran kalam Allah watch how he's not going to answer he's going to get scared now is the Quran kalam Allah Okay, Killer Pie, we know you're embarrassed and ashamed of your prophet. And we're embarrassed and ashamed of your prophet for you too. Don't be a coward and run. Answer the question. Is the Quran kalam Allah? I will block you. I just answered you. You don't get the answer. I don't care. It's not my fault that Muhammad dumbed you down and made you illiterate like him. Answer my question. Is the Quran kalam Allah? Don't waste my time. I'm going to block you. Anytime you come in under any nick, doing taqiyya, I'm going to block you. Answer my question. Is the Quran kalam Allah? And for those of you who don't speak Arabic, that's speech, word of Allah. Muslims believe the Quran is the word of Allah, the, kalam, the, the speech of Allah, kalam Allah. Killer pie, I'm going to give you 10 seconds. We know you're ashamed of your prophet and you're embarrassed by him. And I am embarrassed of Muhammad for your sake too. Is the Quran kalam Allah? Okay, good, good, good. He answered. Guys, leave it alone. He answered. If it's the kalam Allah, the word of Allah, the speech of Allah, is the Quran created? Is the Quran created? Guys, no comments, please. Wait, be patient, learn. Let me deal with this young man. Is the Quran created? Is the Quran created or uncreated? You don't answer, you're going to get blocked, I promise you, because we already wasted the time. Thank you. Now you're being honest. Now I'm going to respect you. The more you answer honestly, the more I'll respect you. I won't <clears throat> insult you. Guys, did you hear? For the non-Muslims, did you hear what he just said? 
That Arabic Quran that you hold, he said it's uncreated. He said it's uncreated with his own mouth. Okay, killer pie. Is the Quran Allah? Is the Quran Allah? Is it Allah? So I'm touching Allah when I touch the Quran. Is the Quran Allah? Let me try this again. Don't tap dance. Is the Quran Allah? Don't tap dance. You think you're smart because you're embarrassed now. Now I'm going to start insulting you because you're tap dancing. Is the Quran Allah? Is the Quran, if I answer, you know I'm going to embarrass you, right? Wait, 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 hold on. Okay. Do you think your words are you? Wait up, Protestant. Hold on. Get off your horse. You left us behind twice. Why don't you leave us behind for a third time? Come back. Hold on, Protestant. <laughs> Get off that horse, Iron. <laughs> no, over there, Nelly. All right. You answer. Are your words you? Are your words you? Please say yes so I can embarrass you further. Say yes. My words are me. Say it. Okay, so are your words you? You and your words are the same. Yes or no? Okay, so they're not. Okay, guys, did you hear it? He just said his words are not him. So he just admit the Quran is not Allah. He just admitted he has two gods, guys. He said the Quran is uncreated and it's not Allah. So Allah is uncreated. The Quran is uncreated. You have two gods, you pagan. Mate, don't be stupid and don't let me embarrass you because the Quran, if it's Arabic, it is the Quran. And if you're living at the time when the Muslims in power, they would kill you if you deny that Quran is the Quran. So shut your mouth, liar. I'll embarrass you too. I'll quote your scholars against you. Okay, so killer pie. If it's from Allah's mouth, is it Allah? Is it Allah if it's from his mouth? So we're back to the problem again. The Quran is not Allah, but the Quran is uncreated and Allah is uncreated. Let's do the math. Allah is uncreated. Quran is uncreated. Quran is not Allah. One plus one. We get two uncreated gods. Bam! You just embarrass yourself again. So, bam! You just embarrass yourself again. So, what was that about Jesus having a God over him? You inconsistent hypocrite. You inconsistent, wicked hypocrite. You condemn Christians when you believe something <clears throat> similar, if not identical, to what we believe. You inconsistent hypocrite. You believe something similar, if not identical to what we believe. Jesus is the eternal uncreated word of God. That's different from God. Yet one with him who became flesh. Ah, oh, you got two gods. How can God have a God? Oh, but I believe the Quran is uncreated, eternal. It's not Allah, but it comes from Allah. But it's not Allah. But I still have one God. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. You inconsistent hypocrite. I don't blame you. I blame your prophet, that antichrist, son of Satan, for doing this to you. Okay? You inconsistent hypocrite. So are you not going to stop and listen so I can now answer other questions? Or are you going to keep talking so I can keep exposing you? You still don't get it? I mean, dude, I don't want to insult you. You're that stupid. I don't care if the words are not created. The Quran that you hold, are you holding Allah? Is that Allah that you're touching? The Arabic Quran. Yeah, don't delete them so people can see what I'm doing because people are not going to know what I'm talking about. So Killer Pie, do you want to stay in this room? 
Do you want to stay in this room? The Quran is a reflect. Wow, you kafir, you munafik. You're lying and doing taqiyah before my eyes. The Quran is not a reflection. It is the word of Allah. You lying, taqiyist, kafir, munafik. I want you to type in, because we're going to now take a clip so the Muslims can see. I want you to say, the Arabic Quran that we have on earth is not the word of Allah. It's a reflection. Type that out. Say, I, killer pie, am saying the Arabic Quran that we have on earth, the Mus'haf, the Arabic Quran is not Allah's word. It's only a reflection. Say that. Say that. You're lying in front of me thinking you're going to get away with it. Guys, you see what he just said? The Quran on earth is not the word of God. It's a reflection. So the Qirat that you recite, the Arabic Quran that's between the covers, the Mus'haf, that Arabic Quran is not Allah's word. Say it is not Allah's word so that we can now do a YouTube clip. We're going to take your words, enlarge them, and we're going to send Muslims your way because Ahl al-Sunnah wa Jama, the Muslim scholars say, if anyone says this Quran that we read is not Allah's word, he is a kafir. Don't think you're going to lie to us and get away with it. Ya kafir, munafiq. You have no shame and honor you'd lie to us. Is that what your deen teaches you? Is that what Allah teaches you lie? Oh yeah, it does. It tells you do taqiyah to the kufar. Yeah, it does tell you that. Oh. One Muslim has such a big test that he helped me embarrass and humiliate Muhammad. Thank you. So Killer Pie, can you stop and listen? No more questions? You want to get blocked or do you want to just listen because we're done now? God sent you. So I can use you an example to show that your prophet is an antichrist, son of Satan. Your religion is a joke. It's of the devil. It's not of God. Glory to the triune God. Even your prophet Muhammad couldn't debate me. Even your prophet Muhammad could not debate Christian Prince or David Wood. We'd embarrass him because we have the spirit of the true God empowering us. Our God is real. Your God is fake. And Muhammad is under the feet of Jesus. Okay. So now you can sit and listen. You want to sit? You can listen. Don't ask me questions because I'm going to take other questions. Deal? Or do you want, you want me to send you on your merry way? You can stay here and listen, but I don't want questions from you, no distractions from you. Alex Butterfield, I don't know if you're an idiot pretending to be intelligent. Who told you that God cannot assume a visible form and a visible shape and do human activities in that shape and form. I know you're not that stupid, Alex Butterfield, because in Genesis 18, God appeared as a man with two others who appeared as men and actually ate food and had his feet washed. So the God who is formless can assume a tangible form that can do human activities. Don't chime in and pretend to be smart because I will then send you to the Mormon temple. Moron. Another guy thinks he knows the scriptures. God doesn't have to have a body by nature to assume a shape that is tangible enough that he can <clears throat> show himself in that shape doing human stuff. <sighs> All right. Okay, guys. Killer Pie. I know you are following Muhammad, a liar and a murderer, a rapist and a pedophile who can't help but lie. Everyone saw I just answered John 20, 17. If you think I didn't answer, that's okay because you got humiliated as we exposed that you're a pagan. You have at least two gods. Do you want me to continue to show that you're a pagan? You have at least three gods, not two. So keep running your mouth and I'm going to embarrass Muhammad. Every time you say something, I'm going to take it out on Muhammad and make his time in hell more miserable. Okay. Now that's it. Let's go to other questions, folks. You want to set up a debate? We can do it. Can you come in now, Discord, live on Discord, and we'll debate on Discord? You want to do it now? You will have a mic. I'll have a mic and see how much, how better you do in, in Discord. Yes, yeah, say yes. I'll come in Discord on the mic. 
and we will have it recorded. Say yes. I'll come on Discord and I'll be on the mic to call out your bluff. Come on. Yes or no? We can do it in 10 minutes. It will give you 10 minutes. Come in. You'll be mic'd up. You'll be on the mic. Don't use that pit pitiful excuse. Okay? All right. Now, folks, everyone with me here? Let's now go into other questions if you want me to continue. Do you guys want me to close this session and start a second one in Q&A or just keep going? Keep going? Keep going? Okay. Any other questions now? Any other questions? Let me take other questions. Who's going to go to his Discord? He's going to come to mine, man. Calm down. But he's not coming anyway. Leather, that's a very complicated question for me to answer because you're asking me, is Allah the name of the Nabataean God Hubal? Is he Hubal? I've written a series of articles saying that there is sufficient ev evidence to suggest. Okay, guys, here's a question. Leather Jacket asked me, was Allah a name of Hubal, the chief idol of the Kaaba of Mecca, who is the patron deity of Muhammad's tribe? His grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, used to worship Hubal. Okay. Is Allah or was Allah a name of Hubal? There's sufficient evidence. There's sufficient evidence showing that Allah was the name for Hubal because Allah was a name that the pagans would give for their chief god, chief idol. But it's not conclusive. That's the point. Look at his delusional demon. It's a celebration. L's against me. I, I just embarrassed Muhammad, my prophet, and I proved to the non-Muslims he's a son of Satan. And see, that's a celebration. See, only a sick, someone sick demonized would think this is a celebration. You keep thinking that as multitudes of Muslims leave Islam and even converts to Islam leave Islam eventually because they see how wicked and evil your prophet is. All right. So any other questions, folks? Let's get into other topics that will hopefully refresh our spirits by the grace of Jesus Christ. Killer pie. Don't pontificate on your religion when you're ignoramus, you don't know your religion, and too dishonest to tell us what your religion is. Hubal was the chief god of Mecca. Okay, guys, you want me to make an example of uh, killer pie about Hubal? You want me to now? Use him to prove that Hubal is Allah. You guys okay with that? All right. You guys want me to do that? Since we're on this topic and he's here and he doesn't learn his lesson, he's a glutton for punishment. He just wants to expose his prophet to shame. All right. Okay, killer pie. Killer pie. Is it not true? And I hope you don't deny this because then I'm going to have to go and quote from your own sources. Will you be honest enough to admit that Hubal was the chief deity the Lord of the Kaaba, according to the pagans. He was the chief deity of, of the Kaaba. Let's see how much you know. If you say no, you're going to regret saying no. Let's see how much you know your sources. Whew, these guys tire me out, man. Was Hubal, was Hubal, the chief idol, the chief god in Mecca at the Kaaba. 360 gods and goddesses, idols. Was he the chief idol, the chief god of, of the Kaaba of Mecca? See, you notice? Oh, thank you. Praise the triune God. Praise the Father, Son, and Spirit. Is it not true, killer pie? He just said yes, guys. Read it. He said yes. That was the idol for Allah? So you're admitting Hubal was the idol for Allah? Oh, no, you're lying, and I'll get there. But before you do that, is it not true, killer pie? Let's see if how honest you're going to be. Is it not true, killer pie? I want to see how much you know. 
that in paganism, polytheism, especially Arab paganism, you could only have one chief god in the pantheon at a time. For example, if you're at a Tayyif and she had a Kaaba, right? Allah would have been the chief deity there. So if she's the chief deity, you can't have another. Each center would erect one chief deity and that place, that center would belong to that chief deity and not another. Yes or no? You don't need to worry about locating the source, Ian. Just be patient now. It's not about you right now. Let's focus on this guy. Is it not true that in paganism, polytheism, of which the Arabs were, that a shrine, a center, a location devoted to one particular god, that god would be the chief deity and there would be no other in that particular location if it was devoted and erected to him? Yes or no? Did you see he just said yes? I can't believe it. This real, this guy really was sent by God. Guys, you hear what he just said? Notice the two facts he admitted. Hubal was the chief idol of Kaaba, and he admitted the second fact. If you're the chief deity, there can't be another rival deity or another chief deity. He just admit Hubal is Allah, because if Hubal is the chief idol of the Kaaba, that means the Kaaba was his house. He's the lord of that house. And that means if the Kaaba belonged to Allah, Hubal must be Allah. Thank you. Thank you. You just proved, man, wow. This has got to be from Jesus. You got to be a godsend. You just ended up proving Hubal is Allah, and you don't see it because you're so blind by the demon that inspired your prophet. Do you, you hear what he just said? Did you? He admitted it. He just admitted it. Hubal is the chief deity, the chief idol, and the Kaaba, Mecca, was the center for Hubal. And in paganism, you can't have more than one chief deity of a certain locale, center, place of worship. So now, let's do the math. One, Hubal is the chief deity of the Kaaba. Two, you can only have one chief deity at a time. And since Hubal is the chief deity of the Kaaba, the Kaaba... Belong to him. He's the Lord of the Kaaba. Three, Allah was another name for Hubal because they're telling us Kaaba is the house of Allah, Beit Allah. Well, how, hold on. How can it be Beit Allah if it's Beit Hubal? If it's the house where Hubal is the chief God, there can't be another God that's the chief, the Lord of the Kaaba. So if Allah is the Lord of the Kaaba, but Hubal is the Lord of the Kaaba, Hubal is Allah. Thank you. Thank you. He just admitted it, but you see, he's too blind, and he's proof of what I said in the beginning. No amount of evidence, no amount of evangelism will, uh, will make someone a believer until the Holy Spirit convicts them, opens their hearts and minds, and even humiliate and chasten them into repentance. So everything I say will go in one ear and out the other. Unless you're praying, Holy Spirit, Shame him to repentance. Convict him to know his only hope is Jesus Christ. Okay? He just admitted, I don't need to end. To answer your question, to answer your question, Hubal is simply the Arabic word for Ha Baal. Hubal is none other than Baal reappearing in Mecca as the chief usurper to Jehovah. Notice the pattern, folks. From day one, Baal, Baal has been a thorn, a snare in the side of true believers because Baal has always competed for the worship of Jehovah. Lo and behold, Baal reappears in the Kaaba as Hubal. Hubal is simply the Arabicized form of Ha Baal. And if you want further proof that Hubal is simply Baal, we're even told in the traditions Hubal was an idol imported by the Moabites, Amr ibn Luhay. He got the idol of Hubal, Hubal from the Moabites. And the Moabites were known for worshipping Baal. That's in their sources. Don't worry about the crescent moon because I'll tell you that was later. 
The Ottoman Empire made that the official symbol. And I'll give you my the links to my articles. Okay, so understand what you have. Islam is nothing more than Arabicized Baal worship because Baal cropped up again in Arabia and Baal's chief prophet is Muhammad using Muhammad to usurp the worship of the true God. And this has been the battle from the beginning. Jehovah versus Baal, Baal. Islam is nothing more than modern day Baal worship repackaged under the guise of being Judeo-Christian monotheism, Abrahamic monotheism. Okay? And why do I speak of Baal being someone real and tangible? Because Baal is nothing other than a name of Satan. Baal is simply a name for Satan. So Baal worship is Satan worship. Baal worship is Satan worship. Can I prove that to you? Baal worship is Satan worship because Baal is simply Satan's disguise. Satan disguising as a god in order to draw people's attention away from Jehovah. So that the spirit behind Baal is actually Satan. The spirit behind Baal is Satan. So Baal is nothing more than a name of Satan. Baal is another disguise of Satan, like Zeus is a disguise of Satan, to get people to worship Baal or Zeus instead of Jehovah. You want proof? Okay, let's go to Mark 3, 22 to 29. Mark 3, 22 to 29. Hey, how many minutes has it been so far? I lost time here. It doesn't tell me how long I've been doing this. It's been two hours, what? Mark 3, 22 to 29. Here. And the scribes which came down from Jer Jerusalem said, He hath Beel Zebub. Beel Zebub consists of two words. Baal Zebub. Lord of the house, Lord of the flies. And by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. Did you guys catch it? Beal is Baal. Baal Zebub. Baal, Lord of the house of the flies. Prince of demons. The only ruler of demons is Satan. So the Jews call Baal of the house, Baal of the flies, the prince of demons. That means Baal is simply another name of the devil, a name that he employed in order to deceive people from worshiping him as a God instead of realizing they're worshiping Satan, the enemy of God. You guys see it? Everyone there? Floyd, you're trying too hard to make up things as you go. There is no proof that Muhammad's dad was a priest. You're talking about Waraka ibn Nufl. That wasn't Muhammad's dad. That was Khadija's cousin, first cousin, right? So this is what happens, Floyd. If you're going to speak off the cuff and you make these kind of statements, that's going to make our case look weaker, giving a weapon hands of the Muslims saying, you see? It's all information and lies. They can't represent what we believe accurately because they can't refute the truth. So be careful. No, it's not the same, Floyd. See, again, here's another guy that's not open to correction. It's not the same. It's not his father. His father, according to the Muslim sources, died before Muhammad was born. How then can you make that stupid mistake of saying Muhammad's father was a priest? You're only giving a weapon in the hands of Muslims to bash you and discredit you. Do you want to be discredited? So no one takes you seriously? Or do you want to learn and be humble and say, okay, I made a mistake? Not his uncle. Hold on. Hey, uh, Gabriel, how you doing, bro? Thank you for that direct line. Is Michael there? The archangel? Yeah, I'm having a hard time on earth. You know, we got these guys that no matter how many times I tell them, don't pontificate. Just be patient and listen and learn. So that you can learn what to do, what not to do. So you can present the best possible case for the glory of Christ. And not let your enemies discredit your testimony for false information. They don't listen, Gabriel. Do you have the same problem with Michael? Or is Michael all right? Oh, okay, hold on. Let me... 
Hey, Mike, what's up? What? Don't call you Mike. I thought we're tight. Gabriel lets me call him Gabe. Sometimes he lets me call him Gabby. You know what, Mike? It seems like you're – oh, there I go again. I apologize. Seems like you're having a bad day. I'll, I'll call you later. All right. Okay. Okay, folks. All I want you to learn from here is that you have a Muslim admitting to you Baal was the chief god of Mecca of the Kaaba, even though he knows him as Hubal. And by making that admission, he just admitted to you, Allah is Baal, Baal is Allah. So originally, the Allah of the pagans was none other than the false god Baal, and Baal is simply another name of Satan under disguise. And this Muslim admitted all this without wanting to, without realizing that's what he just did. Right? Everyone there? So you guys learned a lot from this exchange. I will. I'm going to re rename the session. Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. Apostasy laws are also found in the Hebrew Bible. So when you bring up that allegation against the Muslims, be ready to explain the wisdom and the justice and the Old Testament theocracy for putting apostate Israelites to death. Be careful of the kind of arguments you use, lest those arguments be turned against you and they expose you for being inconsistent. This is what I'm trying to protect you from for the glory of the triune God. Okay. All right, folks, let's answer some other questions. I think Killer Pie got killed and he's eating humble pie. At least it's better than kissing the black stone. Okay. Sandra, Abraham was Jilwaya. He wasn't Yaraya. Does that answer your question, Sandra? Abraham was Jilwaya. He wasn't Yaraya. In fact, not only was he Jilwaya, he was. What, what am I? He wasn't Bezna, Beznaya. What am I? I forgot what kind of Jilu I am. There's Beznaya, Benamaya. No, Beznaya, not Jilwaya. They're Shota, but they're related. Benamaya. Ziriye. He was Ziriya. He was Ziriya like me. No, Sandra. He wasn't Assyrian. If by Assyrian you mean a son of Asher, no. Because I want you to take a moment, read Genesis 10 and 11. Shem had sons. One of them was Ashur. Our lineage is from Ashur, the son of Shem. That's why we're called Ashurai, sons of Ashur. Ashurai, sons of Ashur. Abraham's ancestor was Arfaksad. Arfaksad was the brother of Ashur, and they were the sons of Shem. So Abraham comes from Shem through Arfaksad. We are the sons and daughters of Ashur, who's the son of Shem, the brother of Arfaksad. So no, Abraham wasn't a Syrian. He's not a son of Asher. He's a son of Arfaqsad. Genesis 10 and 11. So that's why when you say he's a Syrian, no. Just because you speak, let's say, Syriac or Aramaic doesn't mean you're Aturaya, doesn't mean you're Ashuraya, son of Asher. It means you speak that language. Just like I speak English and I live in America. Ethnically, I'm not American. I'm American in that I live in the land. This is my country, but ethnically I'm Assyrian. So you can have Abraham living in the land of Ashur, and you can say he's a native of Assyria. So in that sense, he's Assyrian that he lives in the land, but ethnically he's not Assyrian, right? Who are you talking to, Floyd? All right. Now, with that said, any other questions, guys? Because this is Q&A. So let's answer questions related to Christianity, if you want. Because I guess Killer Pie decided to take a trip to Mecca, even though people have been barred from barred from traveling. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you want an answer for that, Armando, because earlier when I said the Holy Spirit has to enable you to believe, you said that sounds like Calvinism. So do you really want an answer? Are you asking because you want to know, or are you asking because you want to know if it sounds Calvinistic? Isaac, what's your question? 
Go ahead. What's your question, Isaac? Isaac Marshall. So I don't know if Armando's asking because he wants to know, or he's asking to see if I'm going to answer along the lines of Calvinism. Are you sure about that? You positive you wanna you wanna know? I don't think you do. Okay, Killer Pie, can you go somewhere else? Maybe go play with dolls with Aisha, like your prophet did? A 54-year-old man sleeping with a nine-year-old who was playing with dolls? Because you're not convincing anything with your nonsense. You pretty much destroyed your religion and proved that you have two gods and that Allah is the idol Hubal. In other words, he was Baal, Satan himself, who inspired your prophet. So move on, young man, little child. We're not interested anymore. Okay, Isaac, what's your question? Let's get into some serious questions, folks. If, if not, I can shut down this session and start another session. Killer Pie, you sure you want me to answer Numbers 30, 31, 17, 18? Again, you're too stupid. You misquoted. It's not Numbers 33, 18. No, I want to answer that. Hold on, hold on. The guy keeps allowing me to humiliate his prophet. You sure you want me to answer Numbers 31, 17, 18? You sure? Not 33, 18. I'm even helping you to try to refute me. These guys, man. They're so quick to block people. I know you should block people, but not someone that's been being used to show why Islam is false and Christianity is true. I'm tired. I'm having a bad day. I'm stressed. I feel bloated. Junk food day. I, eat, I ate too much today. I can't do that. I need to get back and eat right and lose weight because I can't gain weight. Please help me. I'm tired. All right. Because now we got to wait five minutes for this guy to come back. All right. Okay. What was the questions again? Okay. How many of you guys want me to answer the question? Do you need to be spiritually alive? You need to be made alive by the Spirit, born of the Spirit, born again, in order to believe in Christ. Or do you believe in Christ and then you become born again? Do you want me to answer that question? Because this is a question that's going to divide. Not everyone's going to agree and people are going to have difference of opinion and it may start World War III. Christ says, Almighty, what's your question? Isaac, I don't know why they're high, because people had longer lifespans. I mean, how do you want me to answer that? Different conditions at that time. Conditions are more conducive for longer lifespans because God created man to live forever, not to die. And after the flood, the ecosystem changed, so it wasn't conducive for long lifespans. How do you want me to answer that? I can't improve on what you've already heard. Christ is almighty. What was your question? That's the question. I, I don't know how to answer that either. Because what does the apostles forgiven sins have to do with, hold on, let's see, live stream. Hello. Shimon. Who's calling? Uh, hi there. My name is Douglas Asbury, a paid caller from MBS on behalf of Bible League International. No way. Are you international? You know you can't be flying internationally anymore. It's been banned. Oh, okay. Well, this is Bible League International. Where we're not flying internationally. So how do you send Bibles Bible internationally when there's a ban? Well, there's a ban on people flying, not stuff. But how can people fly in a plane and carry Bibles internationally when it's banned? Aren't those people banned too? As I said, we're sending Bibles. We're not sending people. Right now we're But are the people carrying Bible. your Bibles? I, are, okay, I'm going to let you go, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, time sir. Time you Make sure you don't violate the ban or they're going to be after you, the FBI. Be careful. Yeah. All right. Laugh my butt off. Laugh my, not L-M-A-O, Sargon. As Christians, we say, laugh my butt off, not aspirations. You like, Guys, what live stream can you go to and get all of this in one session? Comedy, right? Music, opera, right? Someone yelling in your face, making you feel worthless, and then building you up and cheering you. Come on, dude. I don't know of any, man, dude, come on. All right. Several questions were asked. Okay, let's come back step by step. 
Christ is almighty. Let's go with your question first. Okay. Let's go to your, your question first. Okay. A priest told you priests can forgive sins because the apostles forgave sins. The reason why I said I don't know how to answer that because just because you find the apostles forgiving sins doesn't transfer over to a priest forgiving sins. The one doesn't relate to the other. The one doesn't dovetail into the other. So when you when you make that connection, he makes that connection. This is what we call a non sequitur, right? It does not follow that if this is true, then this is true. Just because the apostles were authorized to do one thing doesn't mean priests have that same authority to do what the apostles did. You get what I'm saying? So one doesn't follow into the other. One doesn't dovetail, dovetail into the other because there's a lot of things that God authorized the apostles to, to do that those who come after them do not have the authority to do. For example, no priest, no pastor, no bishop can now come and write the 28th book of the New Testament. No priest, no bishop, <clears throat> no cardinal, no, no elder can write an inspired book and make it part of the Bible. You with me there? You understand what I'm saying? So there are blessings and graces giving, given to the apostles alone that are not transferred over, carried over to their successors. So that's just why when someone tells me priests can forgive because the apostles can forgive, one doesn't follow from the other. Just because this is true doesn't mean this is true. You got to make the connection somehow. You got to show me how this grace given to the apostles is a grace transferred over to those who came after the apostles. So that's number one, I'm teaching you how to think biblically. That's number one, right? Christ Almighty. Guys, this is where you need to listen. Oh my goodness. Killer Pie, do you want me to humiliate you some more? Killer Pie, I'm going to now challenge you in front of everyone to show me where Matthew 24, 36 mentions the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit doesn't know. Killer Pie, you really must hate Muhammad, your prophet, because the more you talk, the more I'm going to embarrass your prophet. And then I'm going to show you from your Quran that Allah doesn't know everything. Killer Pie, listen to me before I send you to Mecca to kiss the black stone. Where does Matthew 24, 36 mention the Holy Spirit? Protestant, post Matthew 24, 36, so I can continue to embarrass this guy. Okay. Okay. These guys are disgusting in their dishonesty of Scripture. Okay, Matthew 24, 36. But of the day and hour knoweth no man... No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So where does it say the Holy Spirit? Killer Pie, I know being illiterate like your prophet, you don't know how to read context. The Father only means in contrast to the groups just mentioned. In light of these groups, men, angels, only the Father knows in light of these others. These others don't know, only he knows. That's not a statement that no one besides the Father can know the dare hour it is limited to the context. You know, human beings and angels don't know the their hour, only the Father, only in contrast to them. You don't know how to read? Didn't your prophet teach you how to read? Or do you want to be illiterate like your prophet? The only there is in reference to angels. It's like I'm in a room just to dumb it down. I'm going to stoop to your level, and I'm going to be stupid like you so I can communicate to the stupid person. If I'm in the gymnasium and says, hey, you see those guys over there? None of them are UFC fighters. Even that group there, they're not UFC fighters. Only this guy is a UFC fighter. Only this guy. Now, being stupid like you, that means no one in the entire world fights in UFC except me. You see how stupid you are right there? Context will tell you whether the only means no one else in entire existence or no one else in this specific context in respect to the specific groups just mentioned. How stupid are you, dude? Okay, so I'm going to try it again, Killer Pie. I'm going to stoop down to your level because I want to be stupid like you and your prophet. 
Where does it say the Holy Spirit? No, it doesn't say that. It says, no man knows, neither the angels of heaven, but the Father only. Do you understand how to read? If no one includes everyone, you don't need to then mention another group. If no one means everyone is included. Why then say no one, neither the angels? You see, again, I, I, I don't know. Honestly, is it part of the sunnah of Muhammad to be illiterate and stupid? Potato Abdul? Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. The group in front of your eyes, you stone, smooching, two gods worshiping pagan. Matthew 24, 36. Let's try it again. Matthew 24, 36. And then we got to get this guy out of here. He's got to go. Just keep putting them on block so we don't erase his comments. Okay. Read again. Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. Potato, potato. But of the day and hour, no man, no, not the angel of heaven. What do you mean what group? You ummi, it's in front of your eyes. Men, one group, angels, another. So in contrast to them, only the Father knows. Okay, now we're wasting our time with this guy. Okay. Killer, do you want me to show you your, pro your God doesn't know everything? Hold on, I want to embarrass him. Say, I challenge you to show me from my Quran, my God doesn't know everything. Allah doesn't know everything. Do you challenge me? Abdul, 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 potato. <laughs> potato. Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. Say, I challenge you to show me from my stupid Quran, my God is an ignoramus who doesn't know everything. Do you want to go on Discord and challenge me on the mic? A verbal debate? Coward? Are you up for it? Potato. Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. Are you ready? Come on. We, we're wasting our time, man. Come on. We wasted time on this session. You guys up for another session after this where we're just going to focus on questions on Christianity? Is this guy, you know, really tortured me with this nonsense? He's on time out again? Hey, Salah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You guys put him on time out again? No, because it's almost two hours, bro. I don't want to do a three-hour session. So if you guys are really up, we're, we're up to about 160. Huh, Esther? Yeah. It's up to you. I can do a session tomorrow, Q&A, or I can do one right after this because it's close to two hours. And I won't make it a three-hour session. I'm not like Christian Prince who can do four hours and still get 10,000 viewers. I do two hours. I hardly get 2,000. Okay, guys. Tomorrow? Tomorrow it is. All right. We'll do it tomorrow, God willing. This we're going to archive. We're going to have to retitle it. How to bake... Barbecue Abdul steak. How to bake Muslim potato and barbecue Muslim steak. And it's halal. Folks, let's call it a day because it's almost two hours here. The best arguments against atheism is to have him look in the mirror and explain his existence, Isaac. Okay? All right. Okay, guys. God willing, I will see you tomorrow. I hope it was still a blessing. It didn't torture you guys. I hope it was because it fried me out dealing with this Abdul. I love Christian Prince. And you white churchianity types, that's not being Christ-like, brother. I don't see the love of Jesus insulting him because the preponderance of the evidence overwhelmingly points to the probability that this position is most possibly the correct answer that God exists. Yeah. Oh, you didn't get it? Let me repeat it again. The preponderance of evidence overwhelmingly points to the possibility that this particular argument possibly shows God exists. Yes. Uh-huh. See, I'm, I'm articulate. I'm educated. I got a PhD. What do you got? Hmm? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. All right. God willing, tomorrow, Christ is risen, risen indeed. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.